Hey, what's going on guys? How y'all doing? So today I want to go over the battle pass weapons. And if you don't know, once you hit adventure rank 20, you do unlock the battle pass. And for 10 extra dollars, you get a ton of extra rewards. One of those rewards is once you hit level 30, you get a sweet, 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 sweet four star weapon. Uh, these weapons are pretty busted. <laughs> so guys, without further ado, let's hop right into the video and start talking about these weapons because these weapons are insane. So already crit damage, fantastic. And just to save myself a little bit of breath, all these weapons have crit rate as their secondary stat, which is insane. Now for beginners or mid tier players, uh, you know, crit rate is not something that you need to focus on. Really, you want to be focusing on your attack stat, but it never hurts to have extra crit, especially when some of your weapons rely on your crits. Like, for example, this first one here, the Black Sword. So, uh, it increases the damage dealt by normal and charge attack by 20%, which is already huge. 20% is not a small number. Uh, it also regenerates 60% of attack as HP when normal and charge attacks score a critical hit. There's our crit. Uh, this effect can occur once every five seconds. So this is absolutely huge. So you can stick this on a unit. For example, I have this on my Jean. So she's dealing some big numbers. Uh, but also the fact that she's critting all the time, she's going to have A, big damage, and she's going to be healing herself even more. So she doesn't necessarily have to rely on her alt to heal herself or her burst to heal herself. It's insane. 60% of attack as HP. Like that's that number's not huge, but if you're consistently getting crits, it will stack up. And honestly, you don't want to be taking that much damage. So if you're not getting hit that often, this will eventually build up. And you know, it's just kind of done passively. You don't have to activate any cooldowns for this. This sword is insane. If you have a sword user that you want to upgrade, this will probably be an upgrade over the sword they already have. And honestly, depending on where you are in the game, if you're early enough, these weapons are probably all gonna be upgrades to the weapons you already have. So moving on to the Claymore, we have Serpentine Spine, and that looks fantastic. The design of the, these weapons are also incredible. So we do have that crit rate up. Every four seconds, a character is on the field. They will deal 6% more damage and take 3% more damage. This effect has a maximum of five stacks and will not be reset if the character leaves the field, but will be reduced by one stack when the character takes damage. So this can get nutty. So if you're really good at dodging or at not taking damage in general, which honestly you should be, uh, 30% more damage is insane and you're only taking 15% more damage that buff is huge plus you're getting a crit rate on the weapon Th this claymore is nuts it is yes it is straight damage but it's fantastic if you have a good healer just in case if you have a good healer which honestly you kind of should uh this weapon is is the nuts uh next up we got solar pearl for your casters Again, crit rate, like I said before. Normal attack hits increase elemental skill and burst damage by 20% for six seconds. Likewise, skill and burst hits increase normal attack damage by 20% for six seconds. Now, I am assuming <laughs> that this does not stack because they've been very consistent when things stack. It says they stack. This doesn't, so I would say that this is not stackable. But 20%, basically, just for getting a hit in, you get 20%. No matter if it's a regular hit, if it's a skill hit, it's a burst hit, doesn't matter. You're increasing the other things by 20%. That's nutty. That is a ton of damage. This is insane. So if you really want to upgrade your casters, this is the weapon to go with. Uh, The bow. Bow is also nutty. This is a, a mini venti on a stick, basically. If you don't have venti, but you want a venti, this is the weapon to go with. So upon hit, normal and aim shot attacks at 50% chance to generate a cyclone, which will continuously attract surrounding enemies, dealing 40% of attack as damage to those enemies every 5, well, 0.5 seconds for 4 seconds. So 50% of the time, every 14 seconds, you're using a uh, venti burst. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, th this, this bow is nutty. Like if you need some CC or if you have, you know, one of your archers, you really want to upgrade. Uh, look, this is the way to go. Honestly, this could be like, really good on official uh so you're already getting crit rate up like her damage is already nutty with the crit rate up she's gonna be doing crazy attack plus now you're getting the cyclone you're pulling them all in nothing really more i can say about this but like all these weapons are just are nuts 
Uh, except for the polearm. The polearm is not... It's not the best. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It's good. So your crit rate up is higher than all the others. It's 8%. If there are at least two enemies nearby, attack is increased by 16% and defense is increased by 16%. If there are less than two enemies nearby, attack is increased by 24%. Now, I don't know how close is close. Um, overall, it's just kind of a flat attack boost. It's fine. It's not anything super flashy. You're not getting any crazy, you know, any effects like, you know, your claymore that's like really weird. It's just a flat damage boost. So basically you're saying, do I want to throw this on a Zhao Ling? And I don't, I don't know if you do. I think it would be good, but why would you do that when you have these other four? These other four are busted in half. They're super good. So in summary or in conclusion, which of these weapons should you pick? Should you pick up the battle pass? Uh, in my opinion, like I said it earlier in this video, the one that I went with was the black sword. Uh, sword users are my most common unit. Uh, I have Jean, I have Zing Cho, and I have Kaya. So for me, it made sense to have the black sword because those three are the units that I've built already. I can exchange the sword wherever I want. And because those are the units already built and with how hard it is to build a unit in this game currently, uh, some of those units are probably going to be on whatever team I use moving forward. So for me, it made sense to do Black Sword. On Jean, it's really great. Uh, I'm literally just building her. Well, I like building her, but I'm building her for the Abyss because you have to split teams, whatever. I'll talk about the Abyss in a different video, but because you have to split teams, I want another healer. And so with the Abyss, I'm kind of making Jean my soloer. So this sword was great on her. Um, so the Black Sword would be one of my number one options. The other is the Verdescent Hunt. I really, really like the Verdescent Hunt. I think it adds a whole nother element to your Archer game. Uh, this one has an ability like none of the others, quite frankly. And if you don't have one of those higher tier bows, this is one of the best bows that you're going to get. So for me, those would be my two recommendations. But of course, it depends on your team. Depending on who you're using, your main units, you may want to have a different weapon. And that's completely fine because all these weapons are absolutely busted. And you will be happy with any of these that you pick up. So guys, that was my quick little overview of the Battle Pass weapons. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did and you want to see some more content from me, head over to Twitch, twitch.tv slash xjazz207, where I stream three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, around 8 p.m. EST. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. That way I know you guys are digging the content. That's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.